We've come a long way from making mech fret Guitar Hero necks, right? Especially when I made this video back in 2019. Now we got custom milled out frets perfect for key switches and, you know, actual PCBs to put them in. So you could get all of this crap for like, not that much money. So, why not? Why not? Ever since then, I've been experimenting around a lot with different kinds of key switches, different methods of construction, different PCBs, um, and I'm going to share all of that information with you today. Key switches in general are pretty easy to get. Uh, just look up Kale Chalk Reds and find like some weird third party website that you can buy them from. Usually MKUltra or like mechanicalkeyboards.com. They usually have these in stock. The actual plastic frets are a different story because people print these out on and sell them on Etsy. Usually a set ranges from $15 to $30 depending on whether or not they're like resin casted or whatever. Uh, these are 3D printed by my boy Katana and he is an amazing guitar modder and you should definitely check him out. As for PCBs, Hobby CNC, which is where I got this board from, uh, they're a really good resource because they provide designs for every single guitar. And man, what a difference it makes for the stability of your of your mech frets and making sure that they don't die within like a month or something. But yeah, uh, drilling out a PCB, I don't I don't recommend that anymore, especially with the fiberglass shards going all over the place. That's disgusting. I was 19. Okay, gee. Yeah. So uh, uh, just. Take out the pads and the frets and save these for a different guitar. So we don't need this PCB. We need these two things though. So we're gonna desolder this from here. Get a little bit of flux on there. I like to just flood the contacts just so they'll kind of connect together like that. And you can just take out the, the leads right there. Paper towel with some isopropyl. You can get these for like five bucks anywhere. They're amazing. Just get one. Listen to the big smart YouTube man. There we go. Now that we have just this, we're gonna just set it aside and talk about the key switches. I've recommended reds and pinks before. I've also recommended yellows, but I don't really stand by that because these are kind of heavy. They're about the same weight as like uncut pads, so I don't really see that as an improvement. Now what we do to these switches is uh, shoving ball bearings into them. These are 1.2 millimeter ball bearings. You can also get 1.3 if you really want some overtappage. Uh, it feels closer to how a rubber dome works, which is when you press all the way down on the switch is when you get the button press instead of these, which actuates somewhere in the middle. So by reducing the travel distance, we'll have the bottom out be closer to the actuation point, which makes them feel way better. Uh, these are just really hard to find a link for that's actually going to last as long as the video lasts, which is forever. So, ugh. I'm just saying this right now, Google is your best friend. I'm gonna do pinks for this build, I think. Take some tweezers, stick it in this leg, just kind of lift this side up till it's all unhooked, and just lift up one leg from this one and that one. You should just be able to pop it off like that. Now there's not a lot of differences between the reds and the pinks, but reds actually have this little stabilizer bar in here. This thing rattles around in the key switch and you can shake it. It's like a little maraca and I really don't like it. So you can loop your switches. Lots of people do to their keyboards and I know no one that actually does uh, loop their key switches before they put them in, but I like to because it makes them sound better. Start your engines. <laughs> That took like five minutes or something. All right, okay. Let's uh, solder them in. Take all these and just slot them in the PCB. Take a piece of tape, stick them all on there, and then just very carefully flip it. So I'm making sure of two things. I'm making sure I press down the switch as far as I can, as flat as I can, so that when I solder it in, well, I'll show you later. <laughs> I'm gonna solder these in real quick. <laughs> If you have a Les Paul or a Kramer and you have this style of connector and it sucks, this won't fix anything, but it'll definitely make the connection a lot more solid, even if you have paper in it. You just take it, just put like a little solder ball. Rub off the flux. 
So it's only sticking up in height about that much, which for pogo pins, that makes a huge difference. Just to install the wiring, you know, put on the PCB without the frets in there. Check to see. On the back of these PCBs, you'll see a number, uh, one to six, and they correspond with the numbers on this PCB. So this wire is one, and I wanna make sure that I put wire one where slot one goes. What I'm doing here is kind of stupid, but it works. Take the wire, you bend it over, and then once all the wires are bent, you go in and you just add solder. Get a tug on it, just make sure it has a solid connection, and clean all the toxic fucking chemical. Let's take out a neck shell. And this side fits good. Time to put the frets in. Get those screws screwed in, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. And back neck. Oh my god, it's so fucking close. I don't know how the hell. Uh, how do people play with this? God, they're so loose. They're just so loose. I just realized halfway through, uh, I didn't have a Les Paul, uh, so I just built one really quickly. It's an Arduino. Uh, yeah, this thing sucks. It doesn't even have whammy, or it's an Arduino. Uh, you, you can see here that the frets work. Uh, Okay, quick little side tangent that I just figured out. This guitar doesn't overstrum. It, it it doesn't, right? It just it just doesn't over. It's a one two, but it doesn't it doesn't overstrum like ever. Like it it doesn't overstrum, but like it doesn't. I swear to God, it does not. It doesn't overstrum. I'm so confused.